What's up, Skywatchers? What is up indeed? Radiation, a central component of weather control. Did you know radiation is a central component of weather control? Microwave radiation is utilized for weather experimentation and forecasting, and at the heart of weather experimentation is NEXRAD, Next Generation Radar, and the transmission of microwave radiation pollution. The cell phone you hold in your hand and the cell towers it's communicating with are transmitting and receiving microwave radiation. This microwave radiation enables monitoring of rain and snow and other characteristics of weather. This microwave radiation is used not only as a tool for monitoring precipitation, but it's also used to activate and manipulate stratospheric aerosols and to move weather systems. Aerosols absorb radiation and depending on the application may activate, increase or decrease energy within a weather system. Quote, Detecting the radiative signature of enhanced aerosol population is fundamental to understanding SAI, stratospheric aerosol injection. That quote is from the White House report, Congressionally Mandated Research Plan and an initial research governance framework related to solar radiation modification, and it clearly describes the monitoring of increased concentrations of aerosols. According to the report, scientific dimensions of solar radiation modification as well as stratospheric aerosol injection include the use of interoperable ground-based and airborne aviation balloons and satellites these systems involve networks of satellites communicating in real time with ground-based infrastructure via transmission of microwave radiation pollution the assumption that wireless infrastructure is used only for communication purposes is not entirely accurate. Microwave radiation is pollution and it is used continuously for atmospheric experimentations, weather-related activities, and other purposes. Let's take a look at the current NEXRAD reflectivity map. See all that light fuzzy blue? This is the radiation that helps push these stratospheric aerosols and the beams that we're seeing being emitted can pump energy into these storm systems and depending on the polarity, they can drastically intensify or deplete these storms' energies. Now, most of the lines that we see in the sky above us are in fact solar geoengineering and stratospheric aerosol injection. And I see this being confused with cloud seeding. While the particles in stratospheric aerosol injection have seed potential, Cloud seeding itself is much different. Let's take a look. And I do think that there are definitely drones and balloons in the stratosphere doing their part. This operation is worldwide with many components. In an upcoming video, I'll be talking about these pulses coming from NEXRAD and everywhere we find these pulses, catastrophic flooding happens. We've seen this from Poland to North Carolina and Kentucky and every major storm that rolls through. What is it? We'll talk about that next time. The climate is not changing, it's being engineered. The sun is not changing, the atmosphere is being altered. The chaos, it's being manufactured. The goal is complete domination. This is the not so great, great reset. This world is changing drastically and it'll continue to escalate at a quickened pace. What gives the government the right to control what I'm breathing in. How can you fly over my property spraying a bunch of random chemicals without my consent? Nine states, including California, Colorado, Idaho, Nevada, New Mexico, North Dakota, Texas, Utah, Wyoming, currently have active cloud seeding programs. 
However, right now in North Dakota, Republican State Senator Todd Beard introduced a bill that will do away with weather modification and penalize those who practice it. Keep in mind, North Dakota has a hail suppression program that's been running since 1960. In a recent video, I showed you the pulses coming from the next rides in Kentucky, and then we saw the unprecedented flooding. And we've seen this time after time, storm after storm, and the results are always catastrophic. We know NEXRAD and weather modification work together, and all of this is part of the climate chaos agenda. Problem, reaction, solution, order out of chaos. And we can see the rise of smart cities at the heart of every so-called wildfire, geoengineered hurricane, and every flood. And one of the latest examples is in Detroit, Michigan, where a large water main broke causing widespread flooding. And of course, there's already a 15-minute prison city in the works. Recently, I talked to you about how microwave radiation pollution is used to intensify and steer these storm systems. This radiation comes from 5G and Gwen Towers alongside of Nexrad. Throughout history, the dark occult has sought to control the weather, from the Tempestari to the solar geoengineers, and they've risen to a place of power infiltrating or establishing institutions such as academia, science, politics, the military, the media, large corporations. They control the air we breathe, the water we drink and the medicine that we take, the food that we eat and through television and the internet. They control what we see and by doing so they control what and how we think through propaganda and psychological operations and of course social engineering. But today we're talking about geoengineering. So let's talk about atmospheric heating as a weather modification tool. A weather modification technique that includes heating of rain droplets with microwaves between 26 and 35 gigahertz, and then the heating of atmospheric oxygen with microwave frequencies of 54 gigahertz, create an artificial ionization plasma pattern in the atmosphere, which can be heated with microwaves. These plasma zones may interact with electrical phenomena by adjustments in the atmosphere electrical conductivity. Chemicals and liquids are then applied to the atmosphere to determine heat, transport, and electrical properties. The microwave heating technologies provide methods for rapidly heating well-defined regions of a weather system. Ground and or satellite-based microwave phased array radars focused on specific locations in the atmosphere. X marks the spot. The X's that you see above your head in the sky will be used to heat the atmosphere and create artificial ionized plasma patterns what I've been calling an atmospheric lens. Weather modification can alter the concentration of rotational energy in a mesocyclone by heating the cold rainy downdrafts. Depending on how this is done, this technique can prevent the rotation geometry that can produce a tornado, reverse this technique, and spawn tornado formation. The selective heating approach may also be applied to steering hurricanes and typhoons. The creation of artificial ionization plasma patterns in the atmosphere can allow experimental manipulation of the electrical phenomena on storm systems. Such plasma patterns can also be heated with microwaves, a tool that can artificially generate acoustic and gravitational waves in the atmosphere. We can also include SuperDarn and HARP. There are also hundreds of particle accelerators and other radar facilities adding radiation into our environment and particles into the sky. Experimentation with microwave beams in the atmosphere poses real threats and safety concerns. And I do not consent. Alright guys, we still have a lot to cover so make sure you're following along. Okay sky watchers, stay aware, be prepared, and until next time, keep looking up.